On the build show today, we're talking framing. How to choose good lumber for your next custom build. On today's episode, we're talking about framing and specifically choosing good lumber for that next custom build you've got coming up. I'm here with my framing carpenter, Bill Wood. Bill and I have worked together for coming up on 10 years, an amazing carpenter. This is the expert right here. Bill, tell us about this house that you're framing for me and the type of lumber we're using here. Hey, Matt. A uh, pretty traditional house. We're using SPF, mm -hmm. also known as spruce, pine, and fir. Um, it's what we've used for years and years and years. It's a good, good quality framing lumber for walls. Yeah. And tell me about the grade of lumber that we're using, Bill. I think that's important to talk about. Yeah, our supplier uh, specs out number two and better mm -hmm. for uh, for the for the studs. Yeah. So, uh, quick point on that. We're talking about our supplier. We actually bought this house from Eastside Lumber and Decking, a phenomenal local but very small lumber yard. We also buy from McCoy's uh, Lumber often, but those are those are lumber yards that deal specifically with custom builders. Often, they don't have a lot of production builders buying from them, and as a result, they're they're going to stock a better grade of lumber. And that's a tip that I want to bring out for anybody watching this video. Find out where those custom builders are buying their lumber from. Talk to the high-end framers like Bill in your area and say, where should I buy that lumber from? Because they're used to seeing it from all kinds of places. The production builders are typically buying on cost and not necessarily on the best quality. And so you want to find those yards that are really stocking those better grades. And as we talk about grade, number two and better is an excellent grade, especially like our local supplier, because they're really finding those mills that are producing an excellent quality stud. We don't find a lot of wane in the studs that they're shipping out to us. Uh, that's where you're seeing kind of the edge of the tree and you don't have those sharp corners. But you want to be cautious about grade. You know, there's utility grade, which is a very low grade stud. There's standard and better, and there's number two, and those are all lesser grades. So you want to ask your salesman specifically about what grade they're stocking. You also want to ask them about the specific type of tree because that can make a difference as well. Tell me, uh, Bill, your experiences with, uh, let's say, yellow pine or dug fir for studs. Uh, yellow pine and dug fir, we, we don't ever use for studs. High sap content, mm -hmm. tends to move around, but more structural than SPF. Yeah. So we would use a yellow pine or a dug fir for a header. Mm -hmm or for a beam, um, you know, maybe for a floor system yeah. in the old days. Uh, stronger, uh, dug fur is a little more appearance grade in that mm -hmm. sometimes we will use it as a decorative, yeah. uh, as a decorative function, Pretty. yeah. Um, but it does tend to move around a lot. Very strong though. And tell me about the uh, moisture content. I think that's an important point to bring up as well. What are we using when it comes to moisture content on these studs? At KDHT. So KDHT, kiln dried, which means that they're bringing these studs out dried from a kiln. HT means heat treated. That means that they're basically treating the bugs that might be in the lumber. If this is Canadian wood, let's say, we want to make sure that they're killing those bugs in the furnace before we bring that down. But that uh, kiln drying is really important because we want to lower moisture content. Ultimately, these studs are probably going to end up at equilibrium sometime around uh, you know, 10 to 14% moisture content. And if we're getting studs on the job that are 20% that are maybe not kiln drying or they've gotten wet, those studs are going to move on us. So we want to try and get lumber that's in their 15% range, something like that, on the job. It's going to move less on us. As we talk about movement, though, even though you're, we're using a good grade lumber, there's still going to be some studs that get installed, and we got to come back and change some things. Tell me about straightening, Bill, and how we might do that on this job. Well, whenever after we've framed a wall or finished framing the house, we'll go back and check for straightness of these walls. Um, you know, many ways to do it. One option is if you find a stud that's bowed out or bowed in, uh, you can cut a notch out of it and then install a block uh, horizontally and attach that to the studs on either side of it. Mm -hmm. Another way is uh, take your saw, set your blade at 45 degrees and cut across horizontally that bowed section probably a couple of times mm -hmm. where you can actually push that stud in and then you might nail a block to it. Uh, 
just whatever whatever way you feel like you can come up with with a way to straighten out that wall is so important you know like if especially on a hallway or a living room where you've got a big window and the sun shining in there and you really want that wall to be as straight as possible yeah and you know what that brings up a great point bill some other lumber that we've used on other projects is man-made lumber like this lvl you're holding there or lsl studs with that, let's actually transition to another house that Bill and I are building across town, and let's talk about why you might consider using some man-made studs over there. All right, now we're checking out another house that Bill and I are building, and this time we're using a man-made stud. What are we looking at here, Bill? These are LVL studs, uh, Matt. It, they're five and a half inches wide. They're an inch and three-quarter thick. Mm -hmm. You can also get these uh, in an inch and a half thick. Um, this is going to be very similar to our LSL stud, which we've showcased in the past before. Yeah. Perfectly straight, super strong. Um, they've actually got a waxy kind of coating on them, so they'll, they'll, they'll do well in this interim period while we don't have a, a roof on it yet. Yeah, and what's the big advantage on these, Bill, compared to that house that we just came from that had very traditional uh, framing? What's the big deal on these? Well, this is a perfect example here. This wall right here, say it's a 20-foot wall, mm -hmm. we could frame that straight up and down with just uh, single members, and it gives us a good straight uh, wall surface, super strong. It's also great for like a gable end wall uh, where we need to balloon frame that. So that balloon framing is kind of a, a, an old type of framing detail, but it's where the stud goes from the bottom plate all the way up to the rafter. Uh, you don't want that scissor action that may happen at a, the break of a top plate, say. You know, another place where we've used these man-made studs is tile areas, kitchens and bathrooms where you've got, let's say, a countertop, a wall of tile. You want that wall to be dead, perfect, flat. This is a great choice to use a man-made stud as well. Now, what's the downside of working on a stud like this? Well, they're hard on the tools, hard on the, uh, on the nail guns, uh, hard on the saws definitely heavier to pack around yeah. uh, and they come I think you can get them up up to 48 foot length so when we're ordering <laughs> you know we're gonna get we're gonna try to whatever lengths we need but we're actually having to cut every stud so we cannot get a pre-cut stud length in this product yeah which means you're gonna increase your labor cost as well as your material cost when you're framing with something like this but on the positive side, you've also got an incredibly structurally strong house. You know, the engineer designed this to the client specs uh, to take a wind force of over 100 miles an hour here. So we've got a super strong house. You couple that with this Huber Advantech sheathing we're using on the outside where we've got a very specific nailing and gluing pattern. Man, this is going to be a stiff and very strong house. That's right. Hey, Bill, thanks so much for joining me as we talked about framing practices and the lumber choices that are out there in the industry. If you guys have a question, post that in the comments below. Bill and I will try and look at those on a regular basis, see if we can answer those for you. But as we finish this up and wrap it up, I think the big takeaway is make sure you talk to your lumber dealer about what your options are. Think about the quality that you're going for in the house that you're building and choose some of the higher quality products out there. Because when you're building these high quality custom homes, you really need some of the better lumber choices compared to some of the standard stuff in the industry. Bill, thanks for always doing an amazing job on framing for me. Thank you. And guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram or Twitter. We'll see you next time on The Build Show.